Good morning. Now today we are going to discuss congenital heart disease. Congenital heart diseases are the commonest birth defects. See, almost 3% of the babies born, they have one of the congenital heart diseases. And unfortunately, for more than 80%, we do not know what is the cause, what are the factors which cause uh, the development of these congenital heart diseases. Only in 20%, we know what could be the possible causes of congenital heart diseases. Now, what are these different causes of congenital heart disease? Uh, these are chromosomal defects. There may be single gene defects. The single gene defects may be uh, Mendelian type of defects or they may be non-Mendelian type of de defects and then you may have environmental influences. Now the example of chromosomal defect is classical is trisomy 21. It is associated with ostium primum type of AST. And another example is Downs. That is 45 X, which is associated with coarctation of aorta. An example of single gene defect is which may be syndromic, that is Noonan syndrome. There are other syndromes which have associated cardiac defects. Now, when we consider environmental influences, we have very limited data to exactly conclude that how much the environ environmental factors, they influence the development of congenital heart disease. One of a good example is uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Then there are certain infections, for example, rubella, and some of the drugs. like warfarin, like um, SSRIs or other drugs which are used during gestational may result in uh, various type of congenital heart lesions. But as I said, the environmental factors, we have limited data to actually conclude that do they have what uh, effect on the development of uh, congenital heart diseases and what type of congenital heart diseases. But whatever the reason may be, when we get a child, uh, we suspect We go for a screening of child for the presence of congenital heart disease. Now, we first have clinical information, history, and physical examination. When we listen to the child's heart, we may hear abnormal sounds. And one, one thing which in history and examination is more important in guiding us our subsequent course is the presence or absence of cyanosis. So you can divide these into acyanotic versus cyanotic heart diseases. 
So is there any cyanosis or there is no cyanosis? So we've got acyanotic congenital heart diseases and we've got cyanotic congenital heart diseases. Then the second screening modality we use is chest X-ray. What we see on chest X-ray is the blood flow, the pulmonary blood flow. We see it's a normal flow. It is high flow, which is called plethora. Or it is a low flow, which is called polychemia. And then we use ECG. We look for the presence of ventricular hypertrophy. We see it is RVH, it is LVH, or it is biventricular hypertrophy. So these are initial screening uh, guidelines on which we can make our further proceedings that what is the possible cause of uh, this patient's congenital heart disease. Now among this, the most important is the history of history and physical examination and the presence of cyanosis and acyanosis. So on the basis of presence of cyanosis, we divide the congenital heart lesions into various type of uh, lesions and we see how can this help us in making or for the proceedings. So we first take up a cyanotic. Congenital heart diseases, that is the cyanosis in abs uh, the cyanosis is absent. There is a history of cyanosis absent on physical examination. Child is not cyanotic. We can further divide these into the diseases which present with left to right shunting or those who have obstructive features, obstruction to circulation. The examples of left to right shunt are ASD, atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, and persistent ductus arteriosus. While in cases of obstructive, we have various lesions like coaptation, of aorta. aortic stenosis, pulmonic stenosis. The mitral stenosis and the tricuspid stenosis are relatively uncommon conditions. So we can see where the patient is acyanotic, it can have left to right shunt, it can have obstructive features. The coarctation of aorta, the aortic stenosis, the pulmonary stenosis. And here we can have atrial septal defect, you can have ventricular septal defect, and then we can have, a, have persistent ductus arteriosus. Now we see what are the cyanotic congenital heart diseases. The cyanotic congenital heart disease can be with increased pulmonary blood flow, or there can be decreased pulmonary blood flow. The example of one with increased pulmonary blood flow is the transposition of great vessels.
that is aorta is placed in front of in place of the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery is placed uh, in the place of aorta then we have got truncus arteriosus defect the total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage single ventricle or there may be hypoplastic left ventricle or persistent fetal circulation So these are various reasons they present with cyanotic congenital heart diseases and when you see the chest x-ray we find there is increase in the pulmonary blood flow that is pulmonary blood vessels are pilothoric so you find transposition of the great vessels, truncus arteriosus defect, total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage that means pulmonary veins are attached to the left side instead of the right side there is uh, sorry the pulmonary uh, veins are attached to the right side in, uh, instead of draining to the left side that there is single ventricle, there may be left ventricular hypoplasia and there may be persistent fetal circulation. And then those with a diminished blood flow, the classical example, example is tetralogy of the phallet, the phallus tetralogy. Then you've got atresia of the pulmonary or tricuspid valves and there may be Epstein anomaly so these are the various lesions uh, which we can scan when the patient has cyanotic heart diseases you see on chest x-ray there is increased pulmonary blood flow or there is diminished pulmonary blood flow when there is diminished pulmonary blood flow the lesion the commonest lesion is Fallow's tetralogy, that is tetralogy of phallet, then you've got atresia of the pulmonary or the tricuspid valve, and finally you can have Epstein anomaly in which the right atrium is placed abnormally. And then you've got conditions which have got increased pulmonary blood flow. You can see transposition of the great vessels, truncus arteriosus, total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. The pulmonary veins are attached on the opposite side. There may be single ventricle, there may be hypoplastic left ventricle, and there is persistent fetal circulation and then in addition to these some of the conditions are uh, not really uh, clinically uh, significant but may be posing as clinical problems is the dextrocardia it does not have clinical consequences but uh, may be causing diagnostic confusions so this is also a congenital condition